OK, welcome. Uh, <clears throat> we have a, a, a action packed hour webinar. It's going to be starting in a few minutes and uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your day. I don't have my camera. I guess I can turn my camera on. There we go and um, spend some time with us. Learn a little bit more about uh, this amazing technology. Uh, this multi material printing. Um, I was really excited about it when I first saw it, but that it was so cost prohibitive. It, it was in the you know, 100,000 plus uh, category. So it took a lot of people out uh, uh, purchases, but uh, as we progressed, technology got better, it got cheaper, it got faster. And I'm I'm really psyched, especially, uh, you know, seeing some of the sample prints that we, we have one in our facility here in Altadena. And the more we play with the more, we, I just think that Every school should have one that's getting into, into the higher level 3D printing. Even we have high schools that have purchased these. And um, it's just something that we're trying to get more of the word out <clears throat> on what these things can do. We take them to our shows. Uh, they're not crazy. They're they're a little bit easier to manage as far as versus the older polyjet system. So we're going to go over a little bit of that. But uh, real quick, we're not going to introduce everybody, but um, there are two groups involved with this webinar. It's the Peyton group and the H2I group, not to mention Stratasys. Um, and those two companies joined forces back in 2019. Both have similar passions towards uh, education and the transfer of technology in the digital design and manufacturing and now automation world. And they're all kind of coming together um, pretty nicely too. So without too much further ado just a real quick look at the agenda and we're going to get into the polyjet technology and education talk about some certification we're also going to show some samples from the commercial side how they're utilizing it and it's really spreading like wildfires out there in the commercial side which is exciting and we're also going to talk a little bit about the certification that Stratus just came out with both on the fdm side and the uh, polyjet side we're going to talk about jesse's been um Going to take care of that presentation for us. He's been around for a while, longer, not not as long as me, but he's been around for about 20 plus years, close to it actually with Stratasys. He's the national salesperson for education in Stratasys. We're going to have Chris talk a little bit about the current trade in offers. And then we're going to do a brief demonstration on the GrabCAD and how do you assign materials. Now we have a J35 and we can put three different materials at the same time. And that could be a clear material, it could be a white it could be a black and then you could actually change the scale between the black and the white to get a certain type of gray scale and then you have digital abs and you have um some of the flexible materials where you can assign the shore values to so by having three in there at one time you can really get pretty uh you know real type of uh you know pro pro print coming out of your printer that actually look like the final product so um, we're going to talk. He's going to give a little presentation on how you assign materials. Then we're going to talk about a cooperative uh, purchasing uh, method using the source well, which is uh, a great vehicle for um, purchasing larger pieces of equipment that don't have to go out to bid because they've already been done. And so Michelle's going to help us uh, walk through that for about five to seven minutes. And then we're going to do uh, a Q and A along with a giveaway. Everybody is going to be in the giveaway um of some gift cards so we're going to do a couple raffles at the end and we have a 50 dollars gift card for amazon and we have three Stra starbucks gift cards for 25 dollars. so it's going to be a lot of information in a small amount of time but we just appreciate your time and um, you'll get something out of it we hope if not you're going to get some gift card opportunities so could you go to the next slide who's ever running the slide here we go um there's yeah, there's a little bit about our company. We represent once again the digital fabrication tools from lasers to 3D printers to CNC mills to robotics, along with all the support, uh, pre-sales, post-sales, online um, ongoing support. We both carry the same passion, like I said earlier, very similar companies. It was a nice uh, merger of the two. So that's H2I Group in the Midwest and Peyton Group out on the West Coast. And um, I think we're about ready. We have about 25 people signed up. And if you're on this call right now, you're going to be in the raffle for the end. So we'll see your names. We'll put you in the raffle. So 
I think we're good to go, Jesse. Appreciate you being here and uh, it's all you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, thank you, H2I team. Um, for those of you guys uh, joining us, uh, H2I Paint Group is uh, the top educational partner that Stratus has, uh, has the largest install base and takes care of those people that, uh, that they encounter. So it's an awesome relationship for, for Stratus. Um, like Frank said, I'm Jesse Rickberg. I'm with Stratus. I actually manage education for uh, the Americas, and I'm here to talk to you guys about PolyJet. Um, PolyJet is a truly exciting technology. And, and like Frank said, um, the capabilities uh, that we're offering today of mixing materials used to be over $200,000 uh, for an individual system. And today we're, we're, we're under $60,000 for, for a system to do that. You know, we, we've seen in the market that uh, what FDM has done, Stratus has invented FDM. We've invented uh, PolyJet. Um, but as you invent it and patents expire, there's more um, a bigger community offering it. So there's a lot of low end FDM out there. Uh, there is not low end PolyJet out there so far. And so Stratasys has brought that that capability down. Um, and it's exciting to see because we are starting to see high schools use this in their classroom because they're they're doing more design work and it's not just gears and robots. Um, they're doing more biomedical in that high school area as well. So i um, excited to show you guys uh, kind of where we've been, where we're going, uh, and, and show you kind of a, a mix of educational and industry stories where um, this product's really setting itself apart. As you see here, we've been around. Um, I, I, I love this, this slide because it shows we've been around and we're not going anywhere. And we're continuing to add. Um, Scott Krupp, who's our founder, invented fused deposition modeling. If any of you have any low cost FD or FFF printers or plastic extrusion printers, it's all based on him in his uh, kitchen. Then he got kicked out into his garage using a glue gun, figuring out XY coordinates and saying to himself, we're, we're designing a CAD. Why, why couldn't we make this work? The vision originally was prototyping. Uh, and a lot on the, that medical side. Um, we've grown since. When, when I started, uh, as Frank mentioned, I know I look a lot younger, but uh, 18 years ago, um, I used to have to go to shows and teach people about 3D printing. Now you see them all the time. I just uh, recently saw a Mayo Clinic commercial where they're touting 3D printing and using that medicine to find a quicker way uh, to a solution. But, but you see, we've grown. We started as one technology. We merged with Object in 2013. We've added three more technologies, sterile lithography, um, DLP, so a direct light projector, and what we call SAP, which is selective absorption fusion uh, over the years. But we've also added materials companies and software companies. Um, it, it's been significant growth, but, it, but it's been important. Our CEO, Yoav Zeif, his focus is we want to own or really be able to have a customer come to us and us answer every single polymer question that they want. So polymer, whether it's resin or plastic, um, we really have the gamut. And so now these large companies just get to come to us and say, well, do you do this? Yes, we do. Okay, do you have this material? We might or we might not, but now we can create it. So. Um, a longevity here. We're not going anywhere. We're 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 the largest three D printing company in the world, and uh, we plan on being here at least. Heck, I got twenty five more years to work, so we have to be around for at least that long. If you go to that next slide, there there it is. I I breathe, eat, breathe, and sleep our mission. You know, we want to be the top in polymer. You know, the product life cycle um, is significant. Not every, there's no perfect 3D printer out there. And that's why we feel like we had to have these five technologies to answer every questions. More and more, we're getting into the manufacturing, manufacturing area. That means we had to up our speed. We had to lower the cost of, of materials, uh, but we also had to raise the capability of these materials. So um, we see significant growth coming um now uh and in the future as we do develop toward manufacturing 
uh, which is exciting because when you're in manufacturing, right, you're in you're a must have versus a nice to have when you're just in prototyping. We can go to the next slide. Here's kind of our, our makeup of where we are in the polyjet world. Um, that J35 Pro is the system that Frank was talking about. This is a three material system. You don't get the full color effect with J35, but you get that same accuracy, same reliability. You could do clear with with uh, the, our, our 50 shades of gray. I know, Mike, that's your favorite uh, book series, but uh, this is more talking about if we're shifting between black and white and clear, uh, but we can also do a, a elastomer material, uh, which we call elastico. So you can get a short value of 30 or a short value of 40 all the way up to 100 because this is a it's a chemistry set. You're you're using uh, sliders and choosing different makeups uh, and, and getting to produce different shore values of a specific part because you want it to give a little or it's going to have a higher impact. But then you have that detail. We have a lot of people buying this technology and doing um, like a clear exterior and a fine detail part, maybe a blow apart of a, an engine or a blow apart of anatomy within a, a clear piece. You go up to the next level, you got J55 Prime. You know, this system does over, what do they say, 640,000 colors. My eye can't see the difference, but uh, that's what we say we could do. We can be Pantone uh, dictating. But the cool thing about this product is you could do a full color print of something that looks crazy real. We were using hyper realism uh, about two years ago when we launched our, our color. Um, we print we print fruit and people are always taking pictures of it and saying, hey, which one of these is real? It's hard to tell via camera. But when you touch and feel, you can feel it. Um, but this is high fidelity. You know, the, the, they talk about CMFs, so color, material, uh, and feel um, with this technology. We're seeing a lot of groups buy these because it rounds out their lab. Uh, a lot of people have FDM already. They'll have a, a Stratasys and then a bank of uh, maker bots or Ultimakers. But a lot of these labs don't have polygen. They don't have that full color. Um, cool thing that we'll be launching this month uh, for J35 and J55, it will soon have access to our research package. In our research package, you can print um, on things. We've printed on glass, on fabrics, on uh, awards, because we can, within that research package, adjust the uh, Z level. Uh, and started at a different level. You can embed things. You can pause and put things in it. You can print air if you want to do uh, really tiny, small channels. Um, very exciting things. These are two platforms that we established about two years ago, uh, but we were developing them for about eight years. Um, those two technologies, they actually rotate when they when they print. Um, and we did that because there's there's less moving parts. Um, in the larger systems, that J8 series, that J4100, um, the head actually goes down and back and over and across. So there's a lot more moving parts. doesn't have that constant motion. The J35, J55 breakthroughs in technology. I have to say this, it's revolutionary. That is a uh, absolutely a pun, but it's actually true. Um, higher capability um it has uh extreme reliability uh and then it's it's got some real ease of use those both both those systems have a small footprint uh and you can connect in a um a filtration system so uh what we call an, an air filter we call it a pro air you can connect to it so you're not ventilating they don't put off anything dangerous but they do give off a smell just in the extruding of that uh, material which some people they enjoy the smell some people give them headaches so we, we added that uh, filter for that reason as you move up from the j8 and the j4100 these are large systems. These are significant system. We're seeing these used in the world of um, of Meta, of Nike, of Google, all these design groups because they want bigger prototypes. They want fast. They want a, a larger footprint. Um, still extremely high capability, unique colors, 
um, the ability to within the research packet print on within our research package, you can also develop your own um, slicing tool. We call that voxel print. Uh, the way they produce these parts is it's laying down a little droplet uh, of resin. Um, and what we do is we dictate if you're doing a, uh, a mix of our agilis, which is our rubber material and our Vero, we dictate where that material is deposited. Uh, within voxel print, you actually have the ability to write that script and you can stack uh, bump maps and actually follow the uh, rules to that. So it totally create your own digital materials. Then go on to the next slide. So this is where we see in our design solutions. You know, these three D printers do scale. You know, um, we in this system here, since it is a, a, a rotating uh, platform, it's a circle. So we're not talking X Y Z. So when we have to describe how big the parts can be, well, I go, I could print two full size shoes in there, or I could print six water bottles in there. So oftentimes I'll be saying, show me your file. We'll process this file and show you how many we can print at a time, how much time it's going to take. There you see the 640,000 colors. This continues to grow. When we launched this product, I think it was 300,000. Uh, but we've added new materials, new capabilities, more opaque materials, more translucent materials. So we keep adding to that. And then you can see that accuracy. This system prints at 14.5 microns um, per, and that's in height. So it's extremely detailed. And like I said, we can get tiny parts if we encapsulate it in a clear, which then you spray off sand clear coat, and then you have an optically clear part. But this is uh, th this has been our our, our best selling product uh, the past couple of years on the J series because of the versatility. There's even medical material that you can use on this. A medical material we call Med Six Twenty. You can sterilize it. You can bring it in an operating room. Uh, can come into contact with skin. Um, so it, it's truly versatile. I often am, am telling people. This is a Swiss Army knife. It's not a scalpel. It doesn't do just one thing. You bring it into a lab, you're going to have programs all over coming to you and say, can you produce this? Can you do something in microfluidics? Yes, you can. Can you do something in uh, design? Can you? Yes. Can you do something in medical? Yes. It is such a versatile product. Um, it, it's exciting for us to sell. And like I said, we're seeing more and more people add this because of the versatility. So they can bring it into a lab and answer the problems of multiple professors, multiple researchers, and multiple students. But go to that next slide. Here you see, you know, I, I kind of touched on it, but in the design world, we're seeing this uh, be used in whether it's uh, eye care or fashion, uh, wearables, any areas like that. Packaging. Uh, I don't know how I've been in, the, like I said, I've been in this company for 18 years. I get more and more excited about packaging all the time because if you've ever bought something and you get good packaging, you're like, these people thought it through. Well, guess what? They're prototyping with our technology and their packaging. There you see a, 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 a teacup. Um, we work with a lot of uh, design firms. We've worked with the groups at Coca-Cola and Pepsi, and they're designing the next generation two liter bottle. But guess what? They want it to look and feel because when they bring it out and do some testing of it, they want the real uh, a, a real reaction. Rapid prototyping is still our, our widest use application because people want to prototype in house. Uh, they want to produce something. They want to produce five different versions of something and see which one the executives like. Or if they're trying to sell a product to a Home Depot, they're going to bring in a couple different prototypes and they get some feedback. They'll go back to the drawing board, come back to them within a couple days with a design iteration change and adding different capabilities. Then you can see there the dentures. Um, the medical world is a, a significant <clears throat> portion of, of who we sell to. Uh, it's because we have a extreme speed, but also extreme detail. Um, last year, we came out with a material called True Dent. This is something that is actually cleared uh, to be put in as a, a, a removable prosthesis. So basically a denture. They're matching color 
their matching look, their matching feel. Um, if anybody has had, ever had dental work done, or if anybody has ever had a chipped tooth, you know, that you get quite self-conscious about your smiles, but when you can match uh, this uh, in that mode, now we have um, dental labs that are actually producing dentures with our technology and actually people are using them on a day to day basis. It's, it's kind of a it was a um, I would say in 2023 uh, it was one of our biggest releases in terms of capabilities. We can go to that next slide. Um, just because we showed all the color cool things, it doesn't mean we don't do just plain color, plain, simple or strong parts. Jigs and fixtures to do holding tools, go no go gauges, things to help people in that manufacturing process. Uh, I don't know how many times I've seen people build uh, a, a tool to help a worker, to help an employee. Uh, one of our groups at the University of Washington actually got contracted by Boeing. Uh, to create an um, kind of like a cover over their orbital sander. Um, this orbital sander. So if you're at Boeing and you're actually on the sanding team, uh, you're only on that team for two years because after uh, two years, they see um, significant issues with um, basically uh, nerve damage in your hand because all you're doing is feeling, you know, helping with vibrations all day. University of Washington used our polyjet technology, our research package, and created a, 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 a basically a handle that dissipates the, the vibration because they actually used our cleansing fluid as a material to kind of create, I call it a waterbed because I'm not an engineer, but uh, a, a cover that dissipates the vibration so they can work further longer uh, and not, not have those, those nerve damages. Well, that's a thing that I'll bring up because these companies, especially these manufacturers, uh, workman's comp is a big, big thing. When you can create a tool out of plastic or resin versus metal, you're lowering the, the weight. Um, your employers are going to feel better. There's less strain. There's less workman's comp. Uh, all those types of areas. Plus, they can make it more ergonomic or custom to that person's hand. We're starting to see a lot of that. Uh, that's where we call manufacturing support tools. Uh, production parts. Yeah, we're, we're we're seeing people use our technologies to produce. Typically, it's in a uh, the lower volumes. I would say less than twenty thousand uh, to make it actually, um, you know, monetarily advantageous to them uh, because there's a a threshold. If you're making more than that, uh, depending on your part, you're better off going with a tool or a mold. But then we also see people using as uh, molds. Uh, so creating a custom mold, we've got a material that we call um, digital ABS because it's a mixture of two different materials, uh, but it responds like ABS. Difference between the ABS on FDM and Polyjet is that that layering, so that fine feature, since we're laying it down at 14.5 microns, you don't get the big stepping or the, you know, wood graving, uh, wood, wood look uh, of layering on Polyjet. So they don't have to do go through the sanding process because every group, anything time they take out a, a human factor of sanding, painting, plating, um, gives them more um, return on an investment or, or capability. So we see a lot of people using it in the the tooling area. And then you see their com composite tooling, you know, making molds, tools, dies. Um, it, it's a very versatile thing. I'll go back to it again. Again, Swiss Army knife. Jesse, That's, it's nice to see they added that digital ABS to the J35. That was amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a powerful, powerful material that we didn't realize how many people were using it until you put a system out there that doesn't have it. They're like, where's the digital ABS? Yeah. Good point. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Next slide, please. You can go on. All right, this is a this is a small company called Microsoft. They use our technology. Um, they have a lot of our printers. Uh, they, they have enough of our printers where we actually have a, a service technician that is within, I think, 10 uh, miles of their facility. So they're kind of on call. Um, but they're using our technologies in ways that they will never tell us 
until a product's out there and being used. But you see the quote there, right, from their principal model maker, you know, the increased dimensional accuracy with the color. Um, it, it's their primary prototyping tool. When companies of that size that are creating so many different products use that as their, you know, main prototyping tool, um, that means they put it through the the, the, the testing. Um, they're not doing much much post processing, the sanding, the painting, the the clear coating. Um, they cre create the these models and they know how to do it. What I love to see is these groups. A lot of the groups at the beginning would never use our color materials because they don't have designers that understand that because of the educators out there that are continuing to teach CAD and oh, the idea of color, the rendering. Now we have a technology that can actually produce those those printed parts with color. There's a different avenue. There's a different audience. And then the output is even more exciting because they're getting parts that look exactly like the final product where you can they can bring it to trade shows or different events showcase it most of the people don't even know it's 3d printed they often get buy-in and be like okay let's go manufacture this because there was a great response at ces or wherever they're going for for product development um but like i said they don't tell us 98 percent of what they're doing because they're a pretty secretive company Go, again, shows the the reason why they have 3D printing to keep everything in house. Um, huge opportunity for students to go work in these model shops and as designers. Next slide, please. This is one I was uh, intimately involved in. Uh, this is where University of Chicago is actually taking scanned artifacts that they've, you know, all all these different little pieces of. Um, the, this vase uh, from uh, in antiquity, uh, and they're printing it. They only used our our, our Vero uh, white for this, um, just because it was matching what the color of the the pot was back in the, in the day. And then you can see the quote here by Josh is just amazing. To see, until we had only seen the digital version, right? So they're getting digital data from over in, I believe the, this was uh, in Asia, and it's getting sent back to them. They've never seen it. Once they produced it, they can actually engage with these artifacts. We're seeing something similar things be, being done at all, all, all museums out there. The Smithsonian, they are scanning almost every artifact they have, and they actually post it on a website because they want people to see it and be able to print it and engage with it. Um, so we're seeing a lot of that digital area where you're doing a scan and then you can print. You can scan it, you can share it, just like an iTunes or just an email, uh, and people can reduce, uh, reproduce it. And then people can engage with it. it. It's really bringing a lot more toward that project-based learning when you can produce things that you're seeing in, in an archaeological dig or something like that. So this was a, a, a very cool project that uh, got a lot of good publicity in, in, at a couple museums. Next a study um medical i this is medical i would say is probably the biggest application for polyjet because you can reproduce um actual uh, models from ct or mri data um you actually convert it something that they could call they call segmentation so you're taking that dicom file and then taking that um you know that that density of what you're seeing in that dicom and they're picking out the heart or the liver and then they can reproduce it uh, this is being done for simulation and training of future uh doctors surgeons nurses pas uh it's being used to plan surgeries uh it's being used to turn something from inoperable to operable um it's something where I we got a request today one of, to one of our dear friends uh, in, in the industry. Um, her daughter has like dark spots on her brain and they don't know if it's lesions or early MS. And so she's like, can we print it? Yes, absolutely. She's like, I've got the data here on this jump drive. So we're going to convert it, print it, share it with some doctors and see if they can get a closer diagnosis because they don't know what's going on. 
but it's all because the the capabilities and the intelligence out there of people that are like, yes, we can produce this, we can print this. I don't know how many times I worked really closely with uh, the University of Minnesota here printing hearts because uh, they're going to do a, a placement of a stent or a surgery uh, or placement of a, a pacemaker. Now we work with uh, some of these um, medical uh, colleges and they're teaching with 3D printed parts in terms of practicing um, on how to do some of these unique things. Um, very exciting stuff. Um, the ability to do rubber like to get it almost texture of um, tissue, bone, um, organ. Um, even that technology is going to be going down to our J5 series. So we continue to advance and are doing our best to make it more affordable for all the institutions out there. Next slide. And this is like, this is if you've ever seen Coraline or Kubo and the Two Strings, uh, the Missing Link, uh, this group, all the faces on these, their characters are 3D printed. It's really cool because if you see the back of one of those faces, it's got a number, it's based on, that number is based on when it is being used in the the filming this is all uh shot by shot customized animation um this is exciting if you are bored on a computer just look up Leica l-a-i-k-a space 3d printing you'll see a plethora of what they do and the marketing that they do is phenomenal um we can tell when they're creating their next movie because the amount of material they're using just skyrockets i'll tell you this they're in production they're in the, the their sixth movie should be coming out soon but this is a really exciting thing it's because not every kid wants to to build a robot not every not every young lady wants to create a, a a new planetary gear here's an area where design uh is really really important uh we've got a lot of groups that are working in the um whether it's stop motion or video game creation but a lot of that animation world they're using our technology and it, and it shines so next slide uh and then this is this is wellington these guys are crazy they work on avatar they work with um, a lot of different film studios but then they also push the envelope in our research package they're getting uh items to actually respond to heat or uh different types of liquids um, really exciting research that they're doing uh, with this technology. Um, very cool stuff. The, the picture there, you're seeing some fluidics being done. Next slide, please. Finally, we'll dig into our um, certification. Like Frank mentioned, we, we have FDM certification, so fused deposition modeling, and we just finished our polyjet certification, the development of it. So we have our two technologies, our two main technologies that each have, you know, a, a four day course that we teach the instructors, um, at least the content to it. And then the instructors go back and can certify your students. So you'd get trained at Stratasys, Three days, uh, half day as a test, um, and what we're we found out, and this is something that we feel across uh, our entire company is there is a lack of uh, industry demand skills. I think there's a lack of people to actually understand the capabilities of our printers at times. So it's on us. It's on us to teach the um, the instructors and then for them to relay it to the students of what the capabilities are. Um, this, this this academic this program, uh, since it is a certification, it's tied through a third party called Nocti. It's endorsed by them uh, as they kind of put us through the rigor of creating a test, looking through our content. Um, because it is third party accredited, there's funding sources out there. People can go out and get funding towards certifications because it's not just tied to Stratasys as a manufacturing saying you can be certified, but it's a third party party accreditation group saying, yes, we've gone through this, this fits. Um, so a lot of potential for funding. And this is a resume builder where we get asks all the time. We're looking for somebody to work in the lab or we're looking at somebody to be our operator. We're looking at designers that understand additive. These are all capabilities that we're teaching in this certification. Next slide, please. 
um, the the vision is is uh, we thought we it would be mostly uh, post secondary colleges or tech schools that wanted this. High schools want this certification. Uh, colleges, universities want this certification. It's a feather in the cap. They're doing 3D printing. They just get more and more interest from these students of, I want to go further. I want to do more. I want to uh, um, get a deeper dive on it. We're taking the content that we have developed over 30 years that we offer. We actually charge companies probably $6,000 a seat uh, to go through a shortened version of this. We're offering it to education at no cost. All you have to do is have our technology, come to our knowledge transfer, and you'll get, um, you pass the test, you'll get access to all the content and, and kind of the network that we work in. So um, we're seeing all different types of, of students get into this from the groups that want to just operate to the, the, the folks that want to design to the folks that just want a, a more rounded uh, understanding. They want to be a machinist, but they want to know this in the background because they see it as an important part of the future of manufacturing. Next slide, please. And here you see uh, kind of our, our tie into Nocti, um, the the products and services that they offer, and then the the customers that we see in here. Um, the, we chose them because they're a national leader in in crediting uh, solutions and resources. And from having gone through their piloting and their workshops, they've got some of the most Im Im impressive minds that guided us through. Don't forget, match your content with this, match it with the, the testing, uh, ensuring that our testing is hitting uh, what's necessary for all types of learners. So we feel really, really confident about what we've created because we've got we've gone through the rigor with this group. Next slide. And then you see here uh, within the partnership, we both have uh, an FDM certification and a polyjet training. They are two different certifications, so it would be two different trainings for your instructors uh, at that same point in time. Right now, like I said, there's no cost to go through that training. There's a $30 cost for the test. We tried to make it zero, but Nocti mandates that there is some sort of cost, so we tried to keep it as low as possible, um, but we're building career-ready people. We're, we're seeing groups that are just starting in 3D printing, the instructors wanting to go through the certification uh, immediately because it, it's actually upskilling them. We actually have in, industrial customers that are asking to go through this. Next slide. Um, please, any questions, put them in the chat. We'll address them uh, towards the end. Uh, I appreciate uh, the time and uh, thank you and thank the H2I team uh for having us on this thank you jesse appreciate uh really uh amazing to see how far 3d printing has come so I mean, we started selling 3d printing back in 2000 we were happy to get a ivory uh plastic part uh, and you know we were blown away but now we got full color we have multiple multiple materials in the same build it's um it's crazy it's it's it's, it's amazing so thank it's you powerful. for the yeah, it's very powerful. I appreciate the time and effort. I think now we have Justin coming on board for our, we got Chris talking about some specials and then we got Justin. Hey, Chris, can you hear us? Yeah, I got you clear guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jesse, for doing that. Again, if you have questions, put those in the chats for us. So you've seen that there's been a, a big upgrade in the Polyjet J series technology over the past few years and Stratasys has made it a priority to continue to add value to those systems and their systems. And now a top priority is to enable schools uh, to offer these latest technologies to their students. And we're doing that via trade-ins. Uh, the trade-in program is offering anywhere between 30 to 35% off new equipment by trading in uh, end of life systems, uh, end of service Stratasys equipment or comparable systems. The idea is that we're leveraging your previous investment uh, to bring in newer, faster, um, more capable printers and software in this case. Uh, this includes, you know, you got the J35 there for grayscale. You got full color. Um, you got the larger J26 and J850. So research packages, innovation kits, digital anatomy printers. These are all available uh, through some of these uh, trade-in programs. And then certification as well, which opens up a lot of opportunity for additional funding. 
Um, this also applies for the FDM technologies. We're also rewarding uh, previous investments uh, in the Stratasys legacy equipment by giving you an opportunity to get into newer, faster pieces of equipment. So this is just a brief thing here. So please respond to the following. Uh, we have a follow-up email that's gonna be going out. Reach out to your te um, territorial sales reps uh, for H2I group and Peyton group uh, so we can get the specifics of your situation and your needs. Uh, and we can customize a quote. Um, again, any questions you have, please reach out via the chat. We'll be monitoring that throughout the whole event. Uh, but yeah, this is the current promos that are out there right now. And I believe these are gonna be running through uh, the end of September. So it will account for um, the buying cycle of the educational institutions that we deal with. Again, my name is Chris Miller. I'm the Western Sales Manager for um, Peyton Group based out of Southern California. And uh, we have a lot of these pieces of equipment. I saw a presentation earlier today, not this one, but another one where we have a significant investment in 3D printing and education. And now we wanna take a lot of our schools to the next level with these multi-materials, uh, higher end thermoplastics, things along those lines. Uh, I appreciate the time you guys and- uh, Thanks thank you. Chris, appreciate it. And if um, I'm just doing some basic math. If, if one of these systems like the J35 is around, let's just say 59,000 uh, and we take 30% off of that. I mean, I think we're under 50, at least maybe 48 or 47,000. So talk to us I mean, if you need something to trade in, we may have something extra that we can use as a trade in. We have a lot of uh, customers out there traded in uh, equipment that maybe don't upgrade. So we can help you out there as well. But uh, appreciate that, Chris. And uh, let's go to Justin. Can Justin, <clears throat> give a brief uh, demonstration on, on how this all comes together in GrabCAD. I know people have GrabCAD for the FDM. Justin takes care of the Central Valley along with the Kern counties of California. So appreciate you, Justin. All right, let me start sharing my screen here. Thanks for the intro there, Frank. Um, I'm gonna be demonstrating um, the slicing software here for in GrabCAD print um, that we use to, to work with the Stratasys. Um, 3D printers. So some of you may recognize this. Um, here's kind of the templates for all the different uh, technologies that Stratasys offers, FDM, Origin, PolyJet, SAF. Um, but today we'll be looking at the J35 and some of the capabilities um, that we can do with PolyJet. So everybody could see my screen here? Yep. Okay, great. Um, so we are on the J35, it is a rotary build tray, as um, Jesse kind of alluded to earlier in his presentation. Um, the model I have here is showing, right now it's showing three different materials, but you have the um, the dice. There's, let me just blow, disassemble this real quick so you can see all the different parts. Um, so you have the dice, you have um, this little uh, bomb, 3D, 3D bomb that's in the middle of it. But as we blow it out here, we can kind of see all the different materials. So with, with PolyJet, you, you have um, three different materials assigned. So let me get into the tray settings here. So here under tray settings, you can assign um, different materials. Um, for the J35, you have um, Elastico, which has um, different short, short strengths and, and elongation properties. Um, Ultra Clear and Vero, which are rigid. Um, but clear gives us, you know, transparencies and, and white um, gives us like a primer or, or you know, contrasting color for black. Um, and then with these three materials, um, the tray materials, we're able to assign them separately like you see here where the, the dice uh, cube is clear. All the little um, dots on the dice are, are assigned a white color right now. Um, and then the internal uh, 3D model part of the bomb is, is a black color. Right, but I'm gonna, what I want to demonstrate here is is another another way to use the materials. So under model settings, I have selected this part here for the bomb. I'm just gonna show you how we can actually combine them. So tray materials assigns a single material to that model. When we go into digital materials here, this opens up a whole a whole bunch of different options right here. Right, so short strength short strength is gonna be your flexibility. Um, and it, it's going to be combining. Um, we can actually combine the elastico black that I had assigned, as well as uh, a clear, or, or this, in this case, we can't mix it with white. So it, 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 it clearly shows which materials you can um, combine. 
And then as you're combining it, it gives you all these different outputs of different options. So you have different shore strengths like here, rubber like shore 60. You come over here, it's a little lighter. Um, and you have different rigidity impact and elongation percentages. Um, just a bunch of different options, right? When you're when you're working with these materials, and you can imagine all the different combinations um, as you. And this is just the black and white printer, but as you get into the color printer, there's there's uh, more material options as well. Very cool. So as yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I know we've done some examples of like um, like a screwdriver handle, where the the handle the grip of the handle was actually made in that short string, so it's. So it's a little softer on your hands as opposed to being really, really uh, like a plastic hard rigid. Um, so it's on like a rubber like, but the elastico can be white or black too, or change those colors. Yep. So there you go. And then once, you, and then you could assemble it back together, and then it, and it, you know, GrabCAD puts it all nicely back together for you. Um, and and you, you can do also... multiples of those if you want as well, right? Oh, absolutely. Like Ten of them. Yeah. I'm just running my estimates right now, but here let's uh, let's copy and paste one. So that's a good example here. So so one would take us an hour and thirty four minutes to print. Um, I'll, I'll find the layer heights on this, but this gives you an example of how much of the materials you're using. Twenty four grams of total material, and it breaks it down right here. And some support you're using about twelve grams of support, but like Frank just mentioned, we can duplicate this. Can't have one die. You have to have a set of die, right? At least. <laughs> so we could duplicate it. Um, and as long as it stays within the same the same band that you're seeing right here, um, our estimate on time shouldn't change much. I didn't even orient it or anything like that. Oh, let's see. Okay, it doesn't like something here. But let's get an orientation going. We'll arrange it and or uh, we'll arrange it to the tray. <clears throat> um so as it's arranging it, so there you go, put it in a nice spot here. So we'll check our estimate again and see what we, how long it's going to take to print this. So the, the estimate time didn't change because um, you're printing it in the same band. So as it, since it's doing a rotary build, um, as long as it's in that same band, your, your print time is not going to change. It's just going to use more materials for, for the multiple parts. Cool. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's kind of a quick way. And, and as you can see, GrabCAD is very user friendly, um, simple to use, easy to bring in your parts, um, and it just opens up a lot more design capabilities as opposed to FDM, where you're just printing a single color um, on, onto your onto your part here. So you can design all these different you know parts to put together in an assembly, um, and yeah, assign assign a variety of materials. Nicely done. Appreciate that, Justin. We'll be back at you for the uh, the prizes. Yep, I'll stop sharing and I'll get ready for uh, for the giveaway later. All right. All right, winding down. I think we're uh, we got about five to six minutes with Michelle. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, the stage is yours. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, very great presentation so far. And if you are interested in purchasing, I am here to wrap up that piece of it. So. H2I Group has been awarded a competitive contract um, with Sourcewell, which can assist you in purchasing. So on to the next slide. Um, the public purchasing trends certainly have changed and agencies um, like yourselves on this call truly are shopping through cooperative contracts. Instead of having to bid this yourselves, like was mentioned earlier, you can now just already know the products you want, the brands you want um, that were presented earlier, and you can now purchase them directly from the Sourceful contract, which has already satisfied that um, barrier for you. On to the next slide, you will see making this as simple as possible Agencies like yourselves truly just face two simple decisions. What are you going to buy? Uh, one of these awesome models that was shared earlier. And now how are you going to buy it? We know that the public sector is faced um, with thresholds and different buying uh, statutes that you have to follow within procurement policy. So you could bid it yourself, 
but competitors could come in with low end options, forcing you to have to take that lower quality, lower um, standard product. And that would be really unfortunate seeing the capabilities of the brands offered here today. And so, of course, you want the high end quality uh, for your institution. So you can certainly just buy those right off of these already established contracts. Next slide. We'll just share with you again briefly, uh, don't need any of you to be experts on this, but Sourcewell is a unit of government with cooperative purchasing contracts that are already established. So we have the authority to do that to satisfy your solicitation process in the public sector. So again, you don't have to waste your time and money bidding that yourselves and having the unfortunate circumstance of having a low price competitor come in. You get to choose the brands you want and still satisfy that need to have a compliant contract. Next slide. So agencies that we serve here at Sourcewell, everything from state and local um, verticals to public and private education, which should be most of you on the call here today, uh, higher ed, universities, charter schools, K-12, all of those are eligible agencies um, with Sourcewell and then nonprofits as well. Next. So how does this work? Again, H2I Group has won an award and been, that has been competitively solicited. So your agency can simply register and get that legal authority to utilize any of our Sourcewell contracts. You can work directly with H2I Group or Patent Group here on this call to get any of these products and services in the technology education space. And now you have a legal contracting pathway between yourself and that supplier to make those purchases. Next slide. We do offer comprehensive solutions in every category. Here are all the categories that we offer. Of course, H2I Group represented in that health and science sector, but we do have all of these offerings under contract as well. Next. Um, again, just saving you time and money. I haven't met a lot of people that don't want to save more time and money. So this just outlines that traditional bid process that can be long and painful where you have to award the lowest bidder. We know there are flaws in this process and that Sourcewell contract, again, already satisfies that, allowing you to just issue the PO, get this awesome equipment and receive the payment. Next. Uh, this is uh, Sourcewell is free for you to use. You have access to our 500 competitively solicited contracts, including H2I Group. You get what you need when you need it. Again, knowing the education um, purchasing cycle, as was mentioned by Chris earlier, we know that there are needs if you have extra money in your budget now and can do that within this fiscal year or have a new budget to look forward to July 1. We're here uh, with those contracts to make those purchases quickly. And again, highlighting here that ability to choose the supplier that you want. Next slide. Uh, Sourcewell has purchases all over across the U.S., so all 50 states do uh, have the purchasing authority and purchasing power. So know that you're not alone. If you haven't heard of this, definitely check out our website and the landing page for H2I Group and know that others are certainly taking advantage and using our awarded contracts. Next slide. And just Key takeaways for you here today is just determine your purchasing needs. If you saw anything earlier that you are thinking uh, your institution needs, then this is the way to get it as quickly and painlessly as possible in the public sector. So utilize that source well contract uh, with your choice and the ability to obtain the products and services that you need. Next. That's it. My contact Great. information if you have any questions on that. Thank you so much. We uh, we definitely are a big fan of yours. We've uh, both sides, Peyton Group and H2I Group, have had instances where we spec'd out equipment. Uh, I, recently, for me, we did uh, a couple J55s at a high school, and the purchasing agent said, "Well, we're going to send it out to bid." I'm just like, "Well, we do source well." Oh, you do? Yes. That meant that her eyes because they don't really want to go out to bid themselves either, and their eyes just got all happy and watery like oh my god this saves me so much time so we just sent the quote over with the source well contract they already had at their school 
and it was that easy. So really appreciate your time today, Michelle. And uh, once again, take take her information. If you want to talk to us, we know about it as well. But we have all of our equipment, 3D printers, lasers, C CNC equipment on the contract. So thank you very much again. Great, thank great you. presentation. OK, we're about on schedule. I think uh, we're down to the final uh, questions. Uh, if you have any questions, there's been a lot here. Um, any questions in the in the text uh, window below or you want to raise your hand or just speak up, mm -hmm. unmute yourself? The hour's gone by pretty fast. Thank you so much, everybody. And I, I wanted to thank uh, both Camille and, and Megan for their time. They spent a lot of time on this presentation. We're going to be doing more and more of them. We think they're uh, very valuable to get a lot of people information uh, pretty pretty quickly. And they they worked hard to uh, make this all come together. Appreciate Jesse and your and your crew putting together the slides and the content. Uh, so that's about it. We wanted about an hour of your time. Um, not too many questions. Hopefully you just got a lot of information you're going to think about and give us a call and, and ask any more questions. But uh, thank you, Justin. Thank you, uh, you know, everybody who involved and thank you people who enjoyed us for the last hour. It's been a fun action packed hour jesse do you have any final final parting words i like it i appreciate it i think uh, knowledge is power and so anybody with more questions do not hesitate to ask all we're trying to do is trying to build up your your knowledge so you're you're more powerful with this you're and and thank you for teaching the next generation honestly stratasys has customers in all different industries and all of them are looking for that next generation employee that takes it to the next level. So um, 100%. And any knowledge you bring to the classroom is going to be impactful. And if we can do anything directly with your class in terms of 3D presentations, we're happy to.